I recently got this uh, Rigol DS1054Z oscilloscope and I want to have a little play about with it, make sure everything's working properly. Uh, I thought what I'd try and do is display some oscilloscope artwork uh, by a chap called Jerobeam Fenderson and uh, I'll put links in the description where you can download these files from. And uh, what this does is it, you play an audio track into the oscilloscope and uh, we have a left and right channel. Um, and we use the XY mode on the oscilloscope to basically draw pictures on the screen. Now this works a lot better with an analog scope than it does with a digital scope, but we're going to see how well this, uh, this scope does. Now as well as sending the signal to the oscilloscope, I also want to send the signal to a speaker as well so I can hear what's going on. And I um, happen to have some of these breadboard friendly audio connectors, found them on eBay somewhere. And so I'm going to connect these two together. And then we need a way of getting the signal out of here. so. Put a jumper wire in there for the left channel, a jumper wire in for ground, and a jumper wire in for the right channel as well. Let's start wiring things up. So I have the uh, audio cable here coming from uh, my phone, which is going to be used as the audio source. Go into one side. I have a little portable uh, speaker here as well. I'm going to plug that into the other side here. And then let's connect our oscilloscope probes. I can't remember which way round um, these are supposed to go, so we'll plug them in whatever way round we feel like, and then we'll switch it over later if we need to. So there's one probe to the incoming left channel. Here's one probe to the incoming right channel. And we'll connect one of the ground connections as well. Like so. Okay, that's all our wires hooked up, so let's go over to the scope. So let's have a look at the uh, the settings on the scope. We've got channel one turned on here, and um, let's make a few changes. So we probably want an AC couple, this doesn't really matter, as the output from the phone will probably be um, AC couple anyway. We'll switch the bandwidth limit on, that should reduce the noise a little bit. Uh, we're actually using a times one probe at the moment, but again, we're not really taking any measurements, so it doesn't massively matter. Uh, let's bring channel two up. And let's do the same thing here as well. So we're going to AC couple that. Bandwidth limit. One touch, just to make sure everything's correct here. Okay, now let's switch over to um, XY mode. So if you go to the horizontal menu just here, I'm going to switch the time base over to XY. We can already see something that looks a little bit like uh, a shape. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be right now. So let's have a little play about with some of our settings here. Let's look at the horizontal scaling. Uh, let's go to channel one. Just uh, drop that down a little bit. Same on channel two. Okay, we probably need to um, have a look at the uh, vertical scale, the time scale here for a second. So let's bring this up a bit. Ah, cool. So we're starting to see some uh, some shapes on the screen there now. Problem is, it's pretty slow. We've got a fairly slow frame rate. Um, so what we're going to have to do, if we go to the acquire menu, and we can reduce the memory depth on this. So let's go down to, uh, let's try 60k. Okay, that already looks a lot better. Ah, there's a butterfly or something going on there. So what I'm going to do now is turn the speaker on and uh, let's let's watch this uh, watch this display, see how well it works. Now we add a sawtooth waveform to the right channel. Our circle for ellipse turns into a spiral. To get this spiral into the shape of a mushroom, we need to multiply our left channel with a sine wave of the same frequency as the sawtooth. But we're only going to use the sine's last quarter. Of course we want our mushroom to move. Just like in real life. That's why we now add another sawtooth multiplied with a cosine wave of a slightly different frequency to our left channel. We can increase the number of mushrooms by dividing the cosine's frequency by two, or even by three. So as you can see, uh, it can display the images. These images look a lot, lot better on uh, analog scopes. 
Um, but it's nice to see that the uh, the Rigel, even though it's getting a little bit old nowadays, uh, can still manage to, to display things just fine. Okay, I hope that was interesting, and see you next time.